know, I think it's important to hear kind of your journey through that. You know what I mean? Like what, like how you're doing and um, your treatments that you're, you know, the, the kind of the alternative treatments that you're going through. Um, do you want to, again, however you want to do it is fine by me. No, I'd I love to. Know. I, okay. I, um, I think uh, the, I feel compelled to because I've discovered some things that I think would be um, helpful for people that are facing uh, cancer. Um, and if maybe there's nobody out there that has not been affected by it. And uh, some folks, even if you're fa like your family member and you want to help, um, I will tell you, I knew zero about it. Uh, I had no, um, I, I never did any research. I never thought twice about cancer until I got it. And, and then I, I'm, a, I'm a practical, rational person. And some of the, uh, what was being presented to me was irrational and impractical. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was going to lose capability to get rid of something that may or may not kill me, you know, et cetera. So what happened was uh, in my uh, no kidding retirement physical, so 30 years, get through all of that, and then it's time to move on and start relaxing and having fun. Um, they find some numbers that that indicate that, you know, I need to get checked. So looks like possibility there. So I kept pushing it off. And so first kind of indication that, that it was a little bit off illogical was um, the doctor said, called me, I was at a job interview and um, I just finished and the doc said, hey, look, you got to go get a biopsy because um, these numbers show that you probably have cancer. And I said, well, what if I don't? And then she said, well, you're going to die. And I said, when? And she said, I can't tell you. And I said, well, then, you know, that's information. If you can't tell me when I'm going to die, then is it urgent? Is it going to? And it turns out I had the most aggressive strain of this particular cancer. Um, but um, I still have it. I'm still here and yeah. I've been doing different things. So what happened was I, I uh, had surgery and the cancer came right back. And, uh, so that's when I started thinking like, I cannot keep going this route and the standard of care requires a, a sequential order of treatment. So typically it would be like, um, either chemo radiation and then, or surgery probably first then chemo radiation. So we all have heard all of this before mm -hmm. and, um, you know, surgery is cutting something out. Uh, chemo is poisoning and radiation is burning. So those are damaging, uh, treatments. So, sure. uh, so it, I really broadened my, uh, research and thoughts on it. And I started looking at about, okay, what caused the cancer? And that's something that no doctor has ever looked into. Not one ever has asked me what you do for a living where have you served you know what what do you eat what do you drink do you work out the, because the system i believe has become uh full of procedurists so if you're a radiation guy you do radiation this is a solution to the world's problems if you're a, a medical oncologist it's chemo and if you're a surgeon it's surgery uh, so if that's the case then you're not getting a holistic view. So that's what drove me to, to holistic medicine. And uh, now conventional medicine, traditional medicine is wonderful and it's advancing. And I'm not saying that it's bad, but uh, my whole pitch, and this is, this is actually something I would assert to everybody is try alternative first, because you never know, there might be uh, a pattern in your life that if you change, then stress, which is a cause, a cause of cancer, 
could be relieved and you could uh, change everything. Um, diet, uh, for instance, here's a great example. Uh, probably the easiest cancer to identify and, and uh, treat yourself holistically is one you've caused yourself, which is say, for instance, you smoke, you know, stop smoking, yeah. watch yeah. what happens. You know, your body will heal itself. It will try, it will try, you know, now sometimes, you know, the cancer gets going and, and you have to do other things, but uh, so there's a whole bunch of people out there that have um, I, I would call it medically gone off the grid and they write a lot about what they do. They, they share it. Uh, I'm, I'm of the mind of sharing it, not monetizing it. So I want to write a book and I want to send it to everybody um, because of the things that I've discovered in the time that I've had cancer. If I knew a lot of this stuff beforehand, then who knows? Um, right. You know, so uh, like I was alluding to before we started, um, things that I do are simple. They're food, their uh, state of mind, like meditation, uh, their exercise, uh, certain types of exercise, um, and um, supplements. So for instance, like I was told years ago that I had a vitamin D deficiency. So I started taking vitamin D with calcium and then I kind of forgot, you know, I forgot about it and um, I stopped taking it. I stopped thinking about it. And so one of the first things a holistic doctor told me to do when I'm fighting cancer is take vitamin D and hmm. D3. So in my mind, I think to myself, I wonder if I could have prevented this by maintaining a level of vitamin D and I maybe I wouldn't be dealing with cancer now. So now I have three cancers. And uh, so I, I asked doctors, I go, how does, like, I'm a, I'm a healthy guy. I just happen to have three cancers, you know, it's like, how does a guy that, that, that is me end up with three cancers and none of them can answer that question. Now the holistic doctors, they, they can, or they at least, uh, posit what they think it might be by doing analysis of, of you as a person and then um, having you try these different things and see how you react to it. Um, myself, I, I've tried some things that if I had talked to myself before I knew all of what I know, I would have laughed in my face. Um, but I've gone down um, almost every alternative road and it all, here's the thing, it all works. It all works to a degree. And so good things do good things to you. So it's whether or not you can beat it. And what happens is cancer, and I'm going to put human characteristics to it, but it's smart. And there are pathways that feed cancer. So the idea is to block the pathways that your cancer is using to feed itself and grow. If you do, it can shift to another pathway. So you have to try to knock them all out. And that that's difficult. It's doable with one cancer with three. It's hard. I mean, it, because yeah. I, I don't know which one is. And uh, speaking of which, um, somebody's probably thinking, well, you can't starve to, to death and, and then you would cure the cancer, but you can fast and fasting is a, uh, amazing tool. I, I, I did it just to do it. Like I, yeah. when I was younger, I did it, you know, for, I don't know, discipline sometimes to lose weight. Uh, but doing it medically is a fascinating thing. And you think you're hungry, you're hungry, you know, maybe two, three days after day three, you're not hungry anymore. And you start feeling like a million bucks. And it's the same thing your dog does when it gets sick curls up in a corner, may drink a little bit of water, but it's diverting all of its resources to its immune system. And that's what you're doing when you're, re you're fasting is you're re resetting your immune system. Okay. So uh, there's so much to share. Um, I just wanted to, I'll throw that out there as an introduction. But my theory is that, that uh, JD, if you, if I said, um, like, for instance, there's a, 
a protocol, and it's called the Budwig, Bud, Budwig Protocol. And I'll tell you a quick uh, summary of it. Uh, Joanna Budwig was a PhD German uh, biochemist uh, in the 50s. And she determined that through the industrialization of food, our food is not as good as it used to be. So when you eat it, it's difficult for it to get to the cellular level and it doesn't have as much nutrition as it used to. So she developed a recipe and it's, it's the Budwick protocol and use uh, cottage cheese, which is sulfur based. Uh, and that allows the permeation of cells. So this is the break into the cell level, uh, flaxseed and flaxseed oil. You ground it up, you mix it up in an emulsifier and does this concoction. I eat it every morning. And um, now I say that I've, I've taken a breaks several times sure. because the, my cancer is, is uh, it's susceptible to increase with dairy. So I don't eat dairy except for that. But I do realize that um, her pitch was that it doesn't act like dairy when you mix it all up. You put um, turmeric in it and uh, black pepper. If you ever take turmeric, always use black pepper because it makes it more bioavailable. But anyway, the point is that um, her cure rate for cancers, including stage four, was 90%. She had a wow. clinic. It was fascinating. So the pharmaceutical company approached her and they wanted to patent it. And she said, absolutely not, because she wants people like me to be able to go to the grocery store, buy the stuff, mix it and eat it and save your own life potentially. Now it's, yeah. it sounds like oversimplification, but y you know, if you think about it, um, what is, and then name it surgery, uh, chemo radiation. It, it's a very, uh, harmful, but very simple concept is cancer is weak. It, it that's why it, anything that grows fast cells that grow fast is weak because it, it's replicating so fast. That's why you lose your hair when you do um, chemo because that your hair is the fastest growing cells in your body. Okay. You know, so uh, it, the hard part is killing it and not killing you. That's sure. why food, um, some supplements. And so when I talked about the pathways and I'll, I'll take a, a breath here, I promise, but I'm very no, no, passionate about fine. this. this is no, this is fascinating. So the the pathway thing was uh, put out by um, a lady named Jane McClellan. She's a, a Brit, and she was a like a physician's assistant. She wasn't a doctor, but she got cancer, and she started asking the questions. And the doctors had answers she wasn't satisfied with, so she started doing research. So she developed what she calls, because of the British term for subway, a metro. She calls it the metro map. So you can look up your cancer and see the, the pathways that that cancer uses, protein, fat, uh, sugar, big one, sugar um, yeah. feeds cancer. That's why they give you glucose when they do your scan, is the, the uh, cancer sucks up the sugar and they can see that in the scan. But anyway, she, so from the pathway blockage, she identified with the help of uh, pharmacists, some uh, medications that are benign that have by coincidence, uh, anti-cancer properties. So they call it the Care Oncology Clinic. And so I, I prescribe to them and I get a uh, medication that is, is like, you could take it for the rest of your life with no ill effects, except for the statin. I'm leery of statins. So I'm taking the absolute minimum of that. That's a Simba statin. Uh, metformin is an anti-diabetes drug. It's very benign. Uh, doxycycline is an antibiotic. And met, uh, mavendazole is an anti, it's a deworming medication. So get this, it, you know, the thing used to cost, they sell it in the, gro used to sell it in the phar pharmacy or the grocery store. And the pills were little tablets and they were $4 a piece about. And um, a story came out how mabendazole can fight cancer. And I went to get my prescription renewed 
$16,000 copay for, for a, a absolutely teeny little benign pill that gets rid of worms and kids. And they're charging that kind of money for it. And it just makes you more convinced that there's got to be a better way. So, sure. uh, and I'd be happy, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's a, um, people have reached out to me. I'm, what I'm offering is I'd be happy to help people kind of navigate the initial part of it, you, you know, because I, I feel um, conscious of the fact that I am not an expert, but I am living it, you know, and I am concerned about my own life. So, you know, I, I would help somebody kind of get on the path and maybe find the first step. And, you know, some folks have come to me with loved ones that had, that have cancer, their parents or something, and they're, they're just, they just want to get rid of it. So they just, yeah. to just say, okay, let's just go to the doc and do the thing. Well, if you're, if you're 75 or older, okay, maybe that, you know, if, if it doesn't kill you, and it cures the cancer, good on you. But sure. if you're 50 or you're 45 and you're going to have a, um, a, a lingering or, or, or a forever side effect, um, for, for me in particular, like I, I have um, what they call head and neck cancer. I have uh, parotid cancer and throat cancer and lymph nodes involved so that they want to shoot my head full of radiation to kill it. Well, that would uh, destroy my salivary glands. I'd always have to have a glass or bottle of water. Um, and it and then it affects your teeth because your saliva. So I don't want to do that. And, right. you know, I'm, I'll, I'll say I'm fine. I mean, I, I feel fine. I feel absolutely fine. And I've been doing this now for eight years. And like I said, I had one of the most aggressive, deadliest cancers. And... Uh, they told me I had one to three to live for, for this. And, um, it's year six. Wow. So, um, I, again, happy to help. And yeah, I mean, would you, um, I could put your email address in the show notes or I could, I mean, how do you, or somebody, if anybody's listening to this and they, and just shoot me a message and I can get you in touch with, um, with Peter and he, whatever you guys want. I mean, however you want to do it. I, I, I'm a, I love this kind of thing because I think that, um, and not to go down this road too far, but I think people are in the pharmaceutical companies are in it for the money. And like you were just alluding to with that, with that medication, I think the more we can, you know, talk to guys like you and get your inputs and your no kidding anecdotal information on how the, the different methods of treating these kind of things, uh, I think I think we're going to be better off I, for sure. So, and, yeah, and I'd love to, I'd love to for people to reach out to you if they could. Absolutely, hundred percent. And and okay. uh, I I'll go back to using a military approach. Uh, I think especially if if a lot of our uh, your audience um, uh, is military and you think of it uh, in those terms, it it kind of starts to make more sense. You know, what's the 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 most lethal threat? you know, that's the thing you need to be worried about most, you know, like what's going to kill you, uh, what will disable you, what will, um, maybe be temporary, you, you know? And then, um, I, I think, like I said, you're a healthy man. And, and I would say, uh, if you would start doing some of these protocols on a recurring basis, maybe quarterly or something. And what you're doing is you're keeping the, the landing craft off the beach. You know, you're taking them out before they get there. You don't want them colonizing. And that's what the whole right. idea of the um, the protocol I mentioned is, is to, okay, you got cancer. Um, your body might be able to kill it. Let's keep it from propagating. Let's keep sure. it from metastasizing, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd be happy to give you, you know, I'd certainly give you uh, as a friend an uh, update. I'm getting a scan uh, coming up. And it's uh, some newfangled thing and it'll kind of, it, it's good feedback to tell me how I'm doing. And and that's yeah, another yeah. thing is, you know, that uh, that's where your, your conventional doctor can come into play is you get somebody who's got an open mind and they become your teammate. Um, what you need, what everybody needs, which I did not have is a quarterback, uh, I'm mixing metaphors here, but. <laughs> um, you know, a quarterback to go, okay, so here's what we're going to do and then help you, you know, here's now don't do that one, do this, or, 
you know, here's the, here's a number for this guy or something like that. Maybe not to that level of detail, but somebody to guide you with experience to, to get to a certain place that, that uh, you can take from here. And the, ultimately the thing I want to remind everybody is that uh, you're in charge, not the doctor. And don't ever feel timid about saying no, thanks or nope. No, you know, most people will go, okay, doc, sounds pretty bad, but okay, doc, you know, let's, yeah. let's do it. Um, and I had a buddy, I'll just two, you know, quick stories. Everybody's got cancer stories, but um, this one is, is very relevant to this conversation. He was on my team, this team that I'm on now and uh, Marine um, tough as nails. Uh, he was a Marine aviator and um when he got cancer, he got multiple cancers. He told the doctor, give, give me all you got. Give me the max, max dosage, max power. And he did it. And it was devastating to him. He was, uh, he was beaten up. He looked like he was a hundred years old, but they got the cancer yeah. and, uh, he died from, he had no cancer anymore, but he died from, uh, his immune system was shot his, his body was shot, um, because he had just been beaten down. So you can kill cancer, but again, it's the not killing the, the individual. And right before he died, he called me and he said, I want, I, I, he said, I don't have cancer anymore, but he goes, I want to help you in what you're doing because he saw the, the difference and, and the, the benefit of it, you know? So again, I, don't jump to a decision. The doctor will tell you, you have to make this decision fast. Uh, and you, could be true, could be absolutely 100% true. I've seen right. people that find out and they're dead within two days because of when they find it. It's just too yeah. advanced. And and there are cases where it's too, it's too late, you know, but um, I would say it's almost never too late you know, to where there's something you can do that's that maybe you have to go more extreme. Um, but um, there is hope out there that is not a surrender. You know, don't yeah. don't surrender. It seems like um, kind of like you were saying, like you need a, you need somebody you need all aspects. Holistic is the way to go. I mean, even if even if you do maybe a little bit of chemo or, or something, but that doesn't mean you can't do other stuff as well. Or, you know, I mean, and and if like. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's very unfortunate to hear about your friend, but <clears throat> maybe if he had been doing the things you're doing now and that other stuff, he could have built up some sort of immune. I don't, I don't know, but I think I, I, I just feel for you. And I, I hope I really, I'm, it's, it's very encouraging to hear that all that stuff's working for you. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, that you're able to stave it off. I mean, I think that's great. And I, I, I definitely want to hear you know, how those scans go and, you know, just on a personal level, you know, like how you're, how you're doing. And, and if I can do anything for you, if I can, you know, whatever, whatever you're, you need, just, you know, let me know. Or if you need me to, I definitely want to disseminate this information for sure. But no, if, I, you know, yeah, I appreciate it very much. And, yeah. and uh, thanks for your kindness. And I would say to, to be a hundred percent honest, um, there has been a gradual um, advance but it has been like compared to what uh, I was told and what I would have probably experienced, I would have been absolutely uh, um, degraded my immune system and my physical being by going through the treatment for three separate cancers, you know, um, and, and, you know, I probably wouldn't, I would say I probably wouldn't be here today. Now, again, I want to say, that I do believe in modern medicine. It saved my life a couple times um, through other things, but in this mm -hmm. cancer realm, like like I said, and and I, I really do appreciate your words. Um, that think, think, don't surrender, don't just give up and go with it. You know, that's not the thing to do here. It is to stop and go. Okay, start looking stuff up. And if you're not that kind of person, um, that's what we have. Uh, grandkids for and and kids okay. and friends that that uh, they want to help they love you and they want to help so so let them let them help yep. and uh, you know it's amazing there are some anecdotal stories about uh, folks going from uh, um, the stage four to um, cured in months 
yeah. you know, so um, I think the uh, possibilities are out there and they're the thing. Okay. So here's just one more point is sure, sure. that uh, the prolongation is a, is a success. It's a victory because they are making advances um, rapidly. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know much about it, but I have, I have messed with a little bit in the publishing company, the AI stuff. If they could put all of that into an engine like that, um, the the records, the history of the, um, maybe in an untreated way and then certain treatments, maybe they can crack the nut because I don't think there's enough communication. So what you're trying to do is if you can't cure it outright, you're just trying to stay alive long enough before uh, or until until they find a solution you know, sure. uh, and that's coming. It's coming. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind, cancer will be, uh, maybe hundreds of years from now, but it'll be thing of the ancients that, that, yeah. uh, no longer exists. And, and, um, just be, uh, good to your body. And, and it'll be, if you do something and it it's aggravating, stop doing it. <laughs> right. You know, honestly, because <laughs> It, yeah. it really is either to your body. Like if you wear shoes that rub and you, you like your high heels or something and take them off because it, it wear flats or do, do something because con consistent inflammation aggravation could lead to cancer. And that goes emotionally too. You know, if you're in a situation where you're frustrated all the time, you hate your job, you know, you're in a sh bad relationship, um, you know, you can stay in a relationship and then be dead in five years, or maybe you get out and you find a better one, you know, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not saying that lightly. It's, it's a thing, you know, just stress and all that. No, it's a good point. I mean, a lot mental health is just as important as it, it, it can manifest physical problems in your body, you know, if you have poor mental health. So that's, that's a good point. Well, sir, I, this has been awesome. I, this, I can't thank you enough for coming on here. I mean, I just the stories and then hearing your, your, what you're going through and in, in your um, technique to get past this uh, is inspiring, frankly. So I, I just want to say thanks. And, um, and again, I want to keep in touch with you and then let's try to figure out how to, um, to help your book. If you, whatever you need to do, just let me know, you know, if we, we need to, um, uh, you know, transcribe it or however you want to do it. Um, I'm on board. I think it's a good idea. And I, I think it's a good way to, to just to get, because the whole point of this, kind of like you alluded to, was just to get these stories out there. I mean, these, there are so many, so many good stories and so many heroes in our career field, in our, in our sphere of influence that people just don't know about. And I, I just kind of want to get them out there and get these guys the recognition they deserve. So. Yeah. And you're doing, you're doing great at it. And, um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it was an honor to oh, of course. be able to speak on, on all of these things. It's, uh, something you, you got rolling around in your head and, uh, to be able to talk about it. And I guess one of the realizations I have is, is that, uh, I said so much, but I missed so much, <laughs> you know, there was so, so many details. That's why in some cases, uh, you know, books are, are great because they're, they allow for the, the gradual digesting of the thoughts and, and the, you know, like the, this, the history of, of what we we're talking about. And I think you're doing a great service to the community and capturing a lot of the stories of our, our, uh, warriors and, um, the conflicts because it's lessons learned too for the future. And Definitely. it's also an examination of uh, the human, you know, kind of at war, I, I mm -hmm. think is an interesting aspect of it. And uh, again, like I said before, uh, you're a great moderator and um, I appreciate you giving me and, and all of us the time to, you know, a lot of time <laughs> to talk about. Of course. So, and maybe we sure. do a, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll think about, um, what else that I could provide in a maybe separate episode about the cancer part.